Today I show you guys how I tape my stick. What's going on, Throne Army? Putting the final touches on my stick for the big trip to Prague. Um, the new setup has a beautiful, epic Dragonfly Gen 5 C30, and um, it is a smoother shaft. Doesn't really have grip to it as much as I'm normally used to. So, gonna tape it up, and I figured I'd show you guys how I do it. We're gonna need two things besides the shaft itself uh, to tape it up. Uh, the first thing is going to be tape. I'm a big fan of Renfro tape. Um, I've been using it for Ever because of hockey. Um, it's kind of my number one go-to for hockey or lacrosse. Um, I like it over just normal athletic tape that most people use on their sticks because it's a little bit more durable, um, has a softer feel to it. It's less papery. It's more of like a cloth. Um, so that's kind of the main reason. The other reason it's got good grip without being overly tacky. It doesn't really make your gloves really tacky. Um, I kind of hate that sticky feeling. I'm more like kind of just like a, um, a grippy feeling. It sounds really vague, but it makes sense in my head. Um, so I'm a big fan of Renfro. Um, out of all the hockey tapes or just any athletic tape, Renfro is the way to go. And of course, you need a pair of scissors. Well, you don't need a pair of scissors, but um, I like things to be neat. So um, definitely get a pair of scissors. It makes your life a lot easier. So here is my new beauty. It's a Maverick Metric on a Gen 5 Epic Dragonfly C30. Um, strung up with this new pocket that does not have a name yet with some custom throne mesh to it uh, Just unbelievable. There'll be um, a few videos on this bad boy. So let's not focus on that Let's focus on um, taping the shaft itself. So there's actually kind of three steps to make this happen first um, What I like to do is just attach the actual end cap to the shaft with just a wide piece I do the full width of the tape um, and all the way around just once, and that's kind of our base. So let's start there. So let's grab our tape, and the first thing I like to do is kind of just take off the top layer of tape. Um, this is just where it kind of gets dried out and hard. Um, just want to get down to where the tape's really nice, so I just want to cut that off and discard it. And the next thing we're going to do is do that base layer I was talking about. So I always like to st uh, start on the center back of the shaft, as you can see the heads here. So um, that's just because I find that to be where I want a little bit extra grip. So if it's a little bit thicker on the back, um, I just like it that way. You don't have to do that. So I start on the center back and then pretty much just half on the end cap and half on the shaft. Um, and this end cap's a little thicker. It doesn't really come down to a, a tapered point like um, some of the other ones do. So um, there's gonna be a little bit of a mess, but it's really not that big of a deal. So just really wrap around once and you overlap on the back just a little bit and then cut it nice and straight. And then all you wanna do is lay it flat so it doesn't stick out at the end. And then this is kind of the extra um, tape you're gonna have because of that difference. And all I like to do is try and just lay it as flat as I can and then roll it around in my hand and that will make it nice and even and flat. And we're gonna tape over that so um, if it looks kinda ugly, it's gonna be covered. But um, just one one way around the full width of the tape just so the end cap doesn't come off. The next step is probably the most time consuming. That's putting the donut on the end of the shaft. Um, I drop my top hand a lot. I go just the one handed. Um, I'm a right hand player so that's just my left hand. Uh, comes over from my hockey background and I find it um, to be pretty useful in the way that I play. Um, I get called Canadian a lot, um, which is pretty funny in many ways, or walking the dog, a lot of people say. Um, so for this, what I like to do is, um, actually I like it to be pretty thin. I don't want it to be really bulky and add a lot of weight to the stick, but I do want it to be um, pretty big in circumference. So um, what I like to do is take the tape and cut it in a third. So this tape is um, just about an inch. So I like to cut it a third of the way in. So if you can see, I just cut a little strip right there, that's a third. And then what I wanna do is put down the other two thirds down on the tape, really just secure it down, and then you can rip this along and that's gonna re, um, you know, give you a new width of the tape so you can uh, make the size you want it to do. The other thing I like to do is one side is the edge of the tape so it's nice and clean, the other one's the rip side so it's, it's fraying. I like to put the fray side towards the bottom of the stick and that just keeps it as clean as it can be because it's not going to be the one that's contacting with the bottom of your hand and ripping up your tape pretty quickly. Um, for this I like to actually step it in. I like the feeling of a short stick. Um, I just have always enjoyed um, having a little bit tighter um, feel to it, a little bit more responsive, uh, responsive. So what I like to do is actually tape underneath where the gap is. Again we're starting on the center back of the shaft. Actually this is the center front so I'm going to flip it around. Starting on the center back of the shaft you just want to go right underneath um, where the end cap ends. If your um, end cap is more flush, it doesn't really matter. This one definitely is going to um, need a little bit more building up because it's got a distinct um, edge to it. 
and that tape's coming off a little bit because I got the dirt on my hands on it. So just pull it off and then you just wanna keep spinning it around. Um, I wish I could do it right now and put this flat on the ground with the head on it and you can just keep spinning it and it makes your life a lot easier. Um, but I'm trying to hold it up for the camera so I can't do this at this time. But you just wanna keep going around, keep going around. I don't know how many times you wanna do it. I've never really counted, I just kinda of do it until I'm happy with the kind of proportion of the donut to the shaft. So I'm gonna keep going and I'll be back when it's finished. So when the donut is the size that you want it, mine's about, I'd say three eighths thick um, coming off the shaft. All you do is want to cut it. I like to cut it straight and then again, finish on the center back of the shaft and just lay it nice and flat, kind of squish it down to make all the layers just kind of one um, to give it that nice look to it and then just work it all the way around. The other thing you can do is take a pair of scissors um, and just kind of push down on it going both ways. That'll give it um, the kind of the flattest, most like cylinder look. And then coming from the bottom, do the same thing. Um, just be sure not to scratch the crap out of your shaft while doing so. And um, it's got a really nice look to it. Um, this next step is also optional. I like to do it because um, again, I like drop my hand a lot. Um, so this kind of makes it nice and rigid. Also, um, when you're shooting, if you really pull that front hand down, um, give you a little bit more of torque, especially in the dragonfly, it'll actually flex a little bit more um, when you're pulling it down like that. Um, I like to take a just the lighter that you'd use for any stringing and um, just kind of light the bottom and sides of it. And what it does is it heats up the glue and makes it um, a little bit more rigid um, than it would be normally so the tape won't move as much. Um, just be careful, uh, it'll be a little bit hot and uh, since it is tape when you heat it up, the, the glue will melt a little bit and if it gets on your skin, it's gonna burn. Um, so you just kind of work your way around um, as a little bit of a, a secondary step to step two if you wanna do it. And uh, it just hardens it up a little bit. So I like to go along the bottom and then also this way working it around. Um, if you get too close, it will singe the tape and kind of ruin that nice white tape look. So you want to keep it, you know, a good half inch to an inch from the top of the flame. And um, when you're done, it has a little bit, um, yeah, definitely stiffens it up a bunch and gives it a lot uh, more response and nice feel. And so when you're really cranking on it, it doesn't just like kind of fly off or um, just kind of move on you. So um, it's definitely a good uh, kind of bonus step. So you want to take the other two thirds of the tape that you didn't use. You can see right here is the divot from doing the donut. Um, some people like to get rid of all this and go to a full piece. Um, I don't really want to waste that much. So I like to use the other um, kind of two thirds of the tape. Um, the only thing we're going to do is um, change the direction that we're taping because we always want the uh, the frayed side to be covered. Um, it's just kind of the way I like to do it. So what I'm going to do is now do the fray side going towards my hand. Um, the only place where it's not going to be um, the uh, perfect is going to be towards the top. But um, it gives you a lot nicer feel than having the fray going all the way down the shaft. So again, starting on center back with the fray now going um, towards the head instead of away from the head like we did on the donut. We're gonna go right underneath um, the donut and then just work our way around. I like to go around the entire shaft um, one time just to give it um, a, kind of a good start to it. And then when you hit center back, you can see it comes all the way around. That's when I tip the tape at probably a 25 degree angle and start making the rest of the way around. Just when you start off, since it doesn't have that pitch yet, you're gonna to have to overlap a little bit more than you will down the rest of the shaft. But you can see right here, the finished edge is exposed. And um, I like that it's going this way. Chris just demands everything to be taped this way. Um, gives you a little more grip when you're coming down. I don't like that as much, again, because I'm using my bottom hand, so I want the grip going this way. Um, just gives you a little bit more um, feel to it um, and what direction you want. Um, again, something that definitely comes from my hockey background. A lot of you guys know, you know, heel to toe, toe to heel um, on the tape will give you two different feels. So you can see I'm just working my way down the shaft. Um, try to keep your overlap the same width on each one. It'll give you a really clean look to it. Um, that's about it. Just keep going until you're happy with it. So I'll be back once it uh, gets to about the middle of the shaft. That's where I like it. I like to end it right where my top hand sits on passes. So that's about as high as I wanted to go. I normally go a few more inches, but I don't want to cover the dragonfly because um, it just looks so nice on the shaft. So um, when you get to how high you want it, you then have to square off again like you did on the top. So now we're going to uh, bring the tape parallel to the ground um, or parallel to the shaft and come around again to the front and then onto the back. And again, we're going to overlap and finish on the center back of the stick. So 
um, just bring it nice and cross and then I like to cut it just straight up and give it about a uh, three eighths of an inch overlap. So it's all finished and absolutely love this three part tape system. The first one keeps the end cap on when your end cap falls off. It's just terrible. Um, I absolutely hate it. And when it happens to guys, I just feel I feel bad. And then I'm like, why didn't you tape it? Everybody knows that's going to happen. Um, same thing with guys that don't have head screws. They're like, oh, I'll just force it on. I'll stay there. And the head comes flying off in a game. And it always confuses me. Um, the second part being the hardened um, donut. It gives you a nice control. Um, not going to be all sloppy. Not going to wear out. And then um, the third part where it's just from here to here for the grip. I love this because this definitely, this definitely takes the most wear and tear. So you're able to switch it out. Keeps you... Um, um, or switch it out without affecting everything down here. Cuts down a lot of time, gets a game ready very, very quickly. So let me know what you guys think of my tape job in the comments below. And if you guys have any tips or tricks to taping your stick, definitely throw them in the same section. And um, that's everything, guys. I hope you enjoy it, and I can't wait to use this in Prague. Up then, this is kind of our first run, and I think we're going to be uh, changing up, doing some cool stuff. So this is kind of going to be the OG one that's going to be pretty sweet. And uh, no, 